afternoon. My name is Mr. Wolf, and I will be the teacher for this lovely journey that we're going to go on for this whole inclusion um, synthesis of learning. And we will go through three different acts. We'll have the unlearning, we'll have the learning, and then we'll have further inquiry or inquiry on where we will go in the future. So the first example of, that we will go through for the unlearning is the apology letter which uh, we were supposed to write about the wonderful E60 touching a video of a, of, a, of a promising superstar athlete from college where he was top notch and then he all of a sudden had a child that was different than other children and it was about him dealing with the struggle of having this child um, and unpacking that whole situation and going through it. And I found this really, really touching because in the whole part of uh, the first section of this year, learning and developing through um, unlearning and having these stereotypes towards Down syndrome and all these different differences. Um, and now this father really gravitated towards that because I myself and I'm sure some can relate, we all have these kind of judgmental, judgmental, um, how should I put this? Judgmental uh, thoughts and theories towards things that people that may be different or aren't the normal people. And we will uh, slowly get into the whole normalization thing here rather soon. But uh, that's the one thing that I myself have learned, or slash unlearned through this whole process is, is to trying to work with students and uh, or even be more aware and mindful of uh, people that have different differences in accepting them and learning from them and for the better. Yes, yeah, so, so the father, because of the situation that may have appeared to be a downward slope, actually turned out to be a wonderful time. And I know sometimes as human beings we have a struggle with to, by... Uh, you know, perceptions that have been in the world um, through the historical time. But because he had this experience, his family grew stronger and more loving and caring, and he grew more from his personal heart, more than he could have realized. So, also, un unlayering this unlearning was through teamwork and collaboration with the inclusion it makes it a very magical experience witnessed through the, you know, him and his child, but as well as on my practical experience out at Old Giesboro Academy, um, we, I witnessed multiple accounts of students that may have different differences, whether it's um, percent uh, of Down syndrome or ADHD or other types of differences. Um, in the classroom setting, mostly in the physical education room, or the gym, we witnessed, and my heart was touched multiple times by how the class collaborated with each other, worked each other, helped, and were okay with the adaptations towards maximizing the learning for these students. So, got to witness, hands-on and eyes-on, the actual power, the magical power of students working together. I mean, even when they were debriefing, they would all hug each other, they would all embrace, is a fabulous word that I like to use, they embrace each other's differences and learn with each other, creating laughter, giggling, and that positive experience, and of course, the outcomes which we're supposed to reach. So everybody gets those. So you know, whether they're doing funky dances, or if they're playing tag, or something like that, these children all get to work together. And people that kind of have that, nee, 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 the people can be here and there, should witness stuff like that. Um, which again brings us to the whole, the big part that I remember reading through articles was the whole eugenics and normalization curve and kind of how we fall. So, introducing my psychic, the Reiken. As you notice, that we are also two different types of animals here at the zoo school, and they will help me with unpack kind of what we're talking about 
with eugenics normalization, which will segue into part two, the learning how to enhance, enhance to be inclusive. So up here, right here, as you can see, it is our education system and basically it's an image of all these different types of animals, just like you and me, all lined up. And it says, our education system, quoted by Albert Einstein. Everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. And it's kind of what we kind of discussed throughout as well in the book of the, the hippopotamus and how the hippopotamus was trying to fit in with all the other types of animals. Um, it says, for a fair selection, everybody has to take the same exam to climb that tree. So the idea is that for us as students and teachers, and so we have to be mindful for this for our students to have multiple different types of ways, ideas to be able to unpack this. Um, and that's also with the whole further inquiry type idea. Um, us as individuals, as teachers, must kind of, you know, focus on positive choices, have well-rounded things, not just the same exam as witnessed in this beautiful illustration um, towards that. Sweet. So, again, to learning, we got to set expectations and plant seeds amongst our children. So they, thank you very much, Rickon, so they can become um, fulfilling students for our future um, careers and stuff. Um, so also, when learning, we must design rubrics that are, have outcomes, clear, concise, and again, outline expectations. Students need to know the expectations so they can understand and learn, learn from each other as well as learn from you, the teacher, um, what the expectations are so they can fulfill them and have those grid lines. Ooh, hello everybody, that's me again, Mr. Wolf. This is our section of the thing, which is further inquiry. So we're going to learn out where we're going and how we'll get there. I will bring in my level eighty friend, Turtle Turtle, or as we like to call him around here, Squirtle Squirtle. Oh hey Mr. Wolf, how are you? I'm wonderful, fantastic to you have decided to come out of your shell today. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> and so, I just have a couple of questions towards, um, three questions to ask you, Squirtle Squirtle, towards further inquiry. So that is again where we're going and how we will get there. So. Oh, well, I think for the students, it must benefit us to, for teachers to, um, as an individual, they must have language shifts, which includes their tone or like nonverbal stuff. So when you're teaching that it's, it's, uh, it's diverse and it can help all of us learners. Cause it's, as you know, I'm a turtle and you're a wolf. So we learn kind of differently sometimes. So they should have different diversity ways of learning, like right? inquiry methods that we can branch off on our own because I think if the students and the teachers build trust amongst each other through inquiry and, and it allows us to uh, work together and, and, and it, it works with other people and, and it helps us critically think and problem solve. So for example, not all the time you have to use a screwdriver to screw in a screw. Sometimes you can use like a, um, a butter knife. And that's how, you know, as students we can, we can learn because that, there isn't always one answer to everything sometimes. And that's a big piece of inquiry learning, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you very much, Squirrel Squirrel. Um, what do you think are some challenges and stuff like that towards us teachers and stuff like that to kind of have, have uh, the inquiry thing? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of time and ma effort management because, um, you know, you, have, you might have 30 students and if we all want to learn different ways, there's only so much time in the day for us to learn about it. Um, so it's all about finding that happy medium and balance and uh, how to allow students to demonstrate themselves in other ways of learning. Uh, like the wonderful show that I, when I grew up on was the Magic School Bus. And I don't see any reason why every day of school couldn't be like the Magic School Bus and go on journeys or Type field trip ideas where they are actually inquiry learning, and it's you know they're diverse students. They got 
multiple different types of students that are learning and uh, different paces and different different backgrounds um, and they all help learn together with the wonderful teacher and uh, that's uh, yeah. Does that answer your question? Yes, that does. Thank you very much, Squirtle Squirrel. So systemically and institutionally, institutionally and individually, those are big shifts that we must work together and make this possible for our future students of tomorrow. And that's a good thing for us teachers that as we're learning, we can help each other out and we can be together and learn together and build a, foster a great future, a brighter future for our future students. Thank you very much, Squirtle Squirrel. Thank you to all my homies back home, slash my dogs, my wolf pack, and thank you for Joey Bliska on the camera. We're gone. Thank you, Tony. Oh, thanks for that. It was a lovely coffee this morning there, Vanessa. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, oh, now brown cow. <clears throat> oh, the skeleton skeleton right across the street. <clears throat> I think I need more makeup. Bliss guy, I need makeup. Do my hair. Oh, thank you. You're a gem. Oh, how about some water? Where's the water at? Someone give me a drink of water? My voice is cracking. Oh, thank you, guys, sir. Oh, that's the best kind right there, boys. <laughs> Thank you.